Previously, we explored the emergence and evolution of Azadari from Prophet Adam to the 18th century Safavid Empire. In this program, we will explore the cultural expansion of Azadari into different parts of the world and shed light on its contemporary form. The shape and structure of Azadari has drastically changed. In the early days, weeping and remembering the martyrs of Karbala was considered Azadari. Over the years, a proper format and structure has emerged. Albatta Azadari ke kuch na kuch arkan hain jo mushtamil hai bahut cheezon par. Aajkal numaya tareeqe se jo Azadari kahi jayegi wo majlis ka bapa karna yani kahi farsh aza bicha dena aur logon ko khabardar karna bata dena ki yahan majlis hone wali hai log aaye baithenge koi khatib koi daqir hoga kuch bayan karega kuch fazail fir aakhir mein masaib ye aam taur se hum azadari ke lafz ko bol karke ya anjaam dete waqt ye tartib rakhte hain Azadari starts with Marcia. Marcia is a mournful form of eulogy commonly recited in the Indo-Pak region to recall the sad events of Karbala. It is said that the first form of Marcia was recited by Lady Zainab when she mourned for her brother, recalling how the forces of Yazid ibn Mawia slaughtered Imam Hussein. Marcia resase یعنی مرنے والے پہ رونا شعر کہہ کر کے اشعار کہہ کر کے جو ہے اور یہ اشعار کو پڑھ پڑھ کر کے رونا اور دوسرے کو رونا ہے کہ کیفیت یہ مرثیہ ہوتا ہے اس میں جس کو یاد کیا جا رہا ہے مرنے والے کے لیے پھر میں کہوں گا کہ اب ایک لغوی مانا ہوا مرثیہ کا رسا یعنی رونا اور ایک اصطلاحی مانا کہ جس مذہب اور مسلک میں یہی مرثیہ بولا جاتا ہے تو یقیناً مخصوص ہو گیا ہے کربلا والوں کے لیے کہ ان کو یاد کرنا جو سرکار سید الشہدا کے ساتھ میں یا خود سرکار سید الشہدا کی یاد میں ہم اشعار کہتے ہیں اور اس میں جو ہے اس غم کو بیان کیا جاتا ہے جس میں خود بھی انسان پڑھنے والا روتا ہے اور جو سننے والے ہوں تو بھی گریا کرتے ہیں یہ مرثیہ ابتدا مرثیہ ہی سے آزاداری کے ابتدا مرثیہ سے ہے Marcia is incomplete without two names, Mir Anis and Mir Dabir, the two greatest Indian Urdu poets of all time. In the 19th century, Marcia's became immensely popular when Mir Anis penned some remarkable, extraordinary and highly exceptional forms of poetry. His Marcia is considered to be the highest form of Urdu poetry. <laughs> دل سے کیا کہا ہوگا نگاہوں نے سکینہ کو خبر کیا تھی کہ زندہ ایسے ہوتے فالوئنگ آن فرام مرسیا انادر پاپولر فیچر آف ازاداری از نوہا خانی اوسو نون ایز لت میا ان عربک دوسری اس کی شکل جو ہے نوحہ خانی ہے نوحا کو بھی اگر کہیں تو یہ ہیرو نہیں ہے وہی گریا کرنا ہے لیکن لغت پھر بھی لغت کے اعتبار سے عام طور سے جو ہے خاتون جو ہیں اگر کچھ اشعار کہہ کر کے روئیں تو نوحا کہا جائے گا نوحا کر رہے ہیں مثلا لیکن اب اصطلاح کے اعتبار سے نوحہ اور نوحہ خانی جو ہے اس معنی میں نہیں رہ گئے وہ خواہ خواتین ہوں یا مرد ہوں یا دونوں مشترک ہوں اس میں ایک پڑھنے والا ہوتا ہے دوسرے جواب دینے والے ہوتے ہیں کہیں ہو سکتا ہے کہ سب بیٹھے ہوئے ہوں اور بیٹھ کر کے پڑھ رہے ہوں لیکن اکثر یہی ہوتا ہے 
कि खड़े होकर के मातम करते हुए खुद मातम भी एक रुख नहीं है लेकिन मैं बोल रहा हूँ कि सबसे करीब समझ में जो आता वो यही कि मातम किया जा रहा होता और वो अशार एक पढ़ने वाला होता दूसरे उसका जवाब दे रहे होते हैं ये एक नौहा एक रुख ने अदादारी का एक रुख नौहा खाने भी है Mourners often do matam also known as latam in Arabic when one recites a eulogy. Tisra rukn khud ye matam hai. Matam ke liye koi zaruri nahi hai ke kuch padha jaye hi balki khali yaad mein bhi sina zani ki jaye ya koi aur shakl ikhtiyar ki jaye usko matam kaha jayega lekin phir main bataunga ke lughat ke aitbar se matam ke maana bilkul alag hain. और इतलाह के अतबार से मातम के माने बिल्कुल अलग हैं अगर लगत में कोई शख्स जाकर के मातम को देखेगा तो मातम के माने हैं इब्तदाई तौर पर तो सिर्फ औरतों का गिरिया करने के लिए जमा हो जाने को मातम कहा था चाहे वो हाथ सीने पर जाए या ना जाए फिर मातम मर्द हों या औरत हों कोई भी जमा हो कहीं इकट्ठा हों और वो गम का इजहार किया जा रहा हो या रोया जा रहा हो तो उसको भी मातम कहा जाता है लगत के अतबार से खाली जमा होना उस गम के लिए मातम कहा जाएगा लेकिन आज इसलाह में लफ्स मातम बोला जाए तो मातम से फिर सिर्फ जमा होने को नहीं कहा जाएगा जमा होने को मजलिस कह दिया जाएगा इज्तम कह दिया जाएगा जमा हो गए हैं कुछ हो रहा है कुछ बयान इसको जमा इज्तम में जहाँ कुछ जमा होकर के अफराद कुछ बयान कर रहे हैं लेकिन जब तक हाथ के ज़रिए से मातम न किया जाए या हाथ से हट कर किस कोई औज़ार का भी अख्तियार ले लें आदमी और वो मातम कर रहा होगा मातम की एक शक्ल सूरत बोल करके जहन में आती है जब वो हो रहा होगा तभी मातम का मगर ये यकीन अतलाही माना है कि जो लोग आज़ादारी करते हैं उनके यहाँ अतलाह में मातम का माना और मफहम यह है कि खड़े होकर के मातम किया जाए या बैठे हुए हों बैठ करके मातम कर रहे हों और अशार पढ़ा जा रहा हो कोई पढ़ने वाला और सब लोग उसको साथ में भी पढ़ रहे हों जवाब दे रहे हैं उसे मातम कहा जाता है दिस थ्री पार्ट आज़ादारी स्ट्रक्चर इज प्रैक्टिस वाइडली इन साउथ एशिया एंड मिडल ईस्ट और मामूला इन तीनों चीज़ों के इजतम को एक मुकम्मल आज़ादारी कहा जाता है कि मसला पहले मरसिया पढ़ा जाए फिर मरसिया के बाद जो है ज़िक्र हो और ज़िक्र के बाद जो है अफराद खड़े हों उसको मातम और नौहा और मातम करें उसे आज़ादारी कहा जाता है इसलाह में मुकम्मल सारे अरकान की अदायगी का नाम आज़ादारी होता है लेकिन अलग अलग भी कहा किया जाए और किया जाए और एक ही चीज पर इतफा कर लिया जाए उसको भी अजादारी कहा जाता है But it doesn't mean that these aspects are quintessential examples of azadari. In fact, the boundaries of azadari are fluid and can manifest in different ways. Agar kahi sirf baith kar ke zikr hua hai aur giriya azari hui hai, usko bhi azadari kaha jayega. Kahi sirf khade ho kar ke matam ho gaya hai, usko bhi azadari kaha jayega. Kahi sirf nauha padha ja raha hai, to use bhi azadari kaha jayega. Azadari evolved to accommodate more people and to spread the message of Imam Hussain far and wide. For this to continue to happen, it constantly changes its format and structure, but the message has remained the same whatever shape or form it has taken. Is etbar se zamane ke lihaz se tareeqe badalte rahe hain. Zamane ke dosh par jo hai azadari aayi hai, wo azadari mein yaqeenan jo hai tabdeeliyan dikhai denge. Ibtedai daur tak khali marsiye padhe jate the. जलसा जुलूस तो नहीं था बस मर्जियाँ पड़ दिया था कहीं बैठ कर के वो तरीक़ा था ठीक उससे आगे बढ़े अगर क्यों ले करके आप सड़क पे आ गए एक शक्ल बना दी कि ये अलामत हो और वो अलामत हो और लोगों के साथ कहा जाए और ये अल्फाज दोहराते जाते रहे मसला ठीक ज़माने के लिए इसलिए उन्हें पता था कि हर जगह पहुँचने का तरीक़ा ये है कि हम ऐसा करें जिसमें लोग देखने के लिए भी आए और उसी में अपनी बात को हम कह भी दें तरीक़ा इख्तियार किया गया Mourners of the tragedy of Karbala have undergone immense humiliation since the 7th century. If the Buyid and Safavid dynasties hadn't come forward to protect Azadari, things would have been very different. In the 18th century, after almost 10 centuries of struggle, the fear and torture and humiliation had dissipated and Muslims did not have to hide. They could weep in bazaars and on the streets, 
They could lament inside and outside their homes and more importantly, it was a period in which it flourished. Persian civilization played an essential role in the spread and development of Azadari. It incorporated art, drama and culture in mourning. Let's look at some of the key and culturally specific developments post 18th century. The spread of Islam around the globe has led to the expansion of the cultural and religious expressions of Muslims. From the 10th century onwards, new symbols, formats and icons were added in Azadari. Shabi Khani and Tazia Khani were introduced in the 18th century in Iran by the Qajar dynasty. Muhammad Khan Qajar rose to power, unified Iran and formed the Qajar dynasty in 1789. This dynasty saw the introduction of imitations of the coffins of martyrs, shrines and flags, better known as alams. In Iran and Iraq, Shabi also includes portraits of imams, sometimes painting white on the face, just to maintain the sacredness of the imam's stature, and sometimes a full portrait without any self-censorship. A shabi is a replica, also called tabut in Farsi and Urdu, which are displayed in processions. These replicas give mourners a feeling that they are mourning a death in reality, and in this replica of a coffin, Imam Hussein's wounded body is being taken. Similarly, a cradle is another popular symbol. The cradle reminds Muslims of Ali Azhar, also known as Abdullah, the six-month-old baby of Imam Hussein, who was the youngest martyr of Karbala. Similarly, the Persians introduced Tazie in Iran in the 19th century. The word Tazie has a contextual meaning and different connotations in different cultures. In old Persian civilization, Tazie was a passion play. Today in Iran, Tazie is a theatre production in which mourners reenact or perform the tragedy of Karbala. This Tazie and Shabi were new additions to the culture of Azadari. A skeptical mind will argue that these imitations and caricatures do not fit in with the tradition of Azadari as performed by the Imams. The simple response to this concern is that Azadari is about delivering the divine message of Karbala and Imam Hussein. Therefore, all these imitations are a means to express and show solidarity with Imam Hussein. Shabi hai jab hum Urdu ma ashre mein bolte hain, to uska bilkul alag maana hota hai. Arab zaman mein jab shabi hai boli jaati hai, to bilkul uska alag bilkul ana maana hota hai. Bela tashbi hai lafz bol rahe hain. Jab hum Arabo mein kahenge shabi khani, to shabi khani ka matlab ya shabi hona jo hai drama hota hai. Usi vaqe ko, usi kafiyat ko amali karke dekhana. وہ شبی ہوتی ہے اور ہمارے ہاں شبی کا مطلب کسی چیز کے نقل بنا کر کے جو ہے جس میں کوئی جان و حرکت نہ ہو وہ دکھانا کیا ہوا مثلا ایک تابوت کی نقل بنا لی ایک میت کی نقل بنا لی نقل بنا کر کے جو اس کو کر رہے ہیں شبی ہوتی ہے شبی لے کر جانا تو اب یہ زمانے کے لحاظ سے یقین ہے اور ہر ملک مجھے مختلف طریقے ہوئے ہیں تو چونکہ طریقہ مطلوب نہیں ہے بلکہ مطلوب جو ہے پیغام پہنچانا ہے تو ہمیں طریقے پر بحث کرنے ہی نہیں چاہیے یہ دیکھنا چاہیے کہ اس زمانے میں یا آج وہ طریقہ مؤثر ہے یا نہیں ہے اگر ہم سمجھتے ہیں کہ یہ طریقہ جو ہے نقصان دہ ہے تو ہمیں سوچنا چاہیے کہ کون سا طریقہ اختیار کریں کہ حسین اور حسینیت جو ہے زیادہ نمایاں ہو سکے ہم صرف اس ماضی کے طریقے ایسا ہوتا تھا لہٰذا ہم بھی کریں گے یہ کوئی یہ یہ اختیار کرنا اس بات کی دلیل کہ گویا آپ مان رہے ہیں کہ نہیں طریقہ ہی مطلوب ہے نہیں یہ ان احکام میں سے جس میں طریقہ مطلوب نہیں ہے تازیہ ان پاکستان اور انڈیا مینز ریپلیکرز آف دا موزلیمز آف امام حسین اینڈ ہیز دا باس شرائنز ود دا پیسج آف ٹائم از اداری ہیز ایوالوڈ اینڈ ابزارب چینجز دیٹ ور ریکوائر آف اٹ ان ایچ پیریڈ آف ٹائم The emergence of politics and arts in Muharram rituals was the result of Azadari's flexible nature. There are modern approaches to remembering Imam Hussein. Uh, for example, movies, films, obviously, you, you don't see that a century ago. Um, especially some of the more highly uh, politicized poetry and recitations. That's something that appears to have evolved in the past couple centuries. 
Um, so one can say that's in dealing with respect to modern circumstances. Uh, so th there is evolution in accordance to what is needed and, and what is common and what is normal in society. Who would have thought that an Arab who was slaughtered in the burning heat of Karbala in the 7th century would inspire dozens of nationalities, faiths and cultures one day? Sometimes it is difficult to comprehend how Azadari, initiated by Lady Zainab, managed to continue over the centuries under strict surveillance and massive oppression and has now spread so widely that it has become one of the widest and largest practicing phenomena. Arba'in, the 40th day after Imam Hussein's martyrdom, now comes second on the list of the largest gatherings in human history. According to an estimate, Arba'in is attended by up to 17 to 18 million people annually. Millions chant La Beg Ya Hussein, trying to get a sense of feeling of how their beloved Imam suffered on the day of Ashura. Today, Azadari has spread across the Muslim world and into different cultures. Within cultures, there are subcultures, and within those subcultures, there are diverse groups. The word Azadari is not monolithic. It is culturally, philosophically, and conceptually heterogeneous. Furthermore, Azadari itself leaves a space for different cultures to express and lament for Imam Hussein in their own way as there is no clear or categorical instruction on how to perform a zadari. Reality is Allah is infinite and Allah has created the universe with a lot of diversity, I believe, to reflect the infinite nature of Allah. The human beings are not different. Allah has created all of us different and Allah has created different cultures differently. And it is natural that some of this is going to come out in our spiritual or artistic or other forms of expression. So. When it comes to things that are not mandated by religious law in terms of you have to do it this way or you have to do it that way, uh, I think it's a good thing that there is variety. Since Azadari doesn't instruct a specific way of mourning, it naturally becomes adaptable. One such example of its adaptability is the rise of Azadari in the West. The rise of Azadari in the non-Muslim world is particularly interesting as language has been an essential element in shaping and framing Azadari. For example, as we have seen in Marcias, it is constructed in such a way as to encourage and make people cry. Similarly, Tazie and eulogies are performed and structured in a way that it carries an element of sorrow and grief. <laughs> Furthermore, passionate crying is in line with the Muslim cultural setting. On the other hand, Western languages such as English, French and German are not as structured as Urdu, Farsi and Arabic. But interestingly, over the last few decades, Azadari has significantly spread in different non-Eastern languages, especially English. This is fascinating to explore. How is it possible to adopt something like Azadari, which is almost alien to Western language and culture? Some scholars believe that lamentation in general has been a part of Western culture. Well, Azadari in general has been actually prevalent in Western culture for Jesus Christ. We know that in different 
uh, European countries, they had different ways of lamenting for Jesus Christ. And some of them do certain things like, for example, cutting themselves. Some cultures of the uh, Southern Europe, they cut themselves. In, uh, in uh, Latin America, uh, they do that and they, they, they make lots of blood coming out on the day when Jesus was crucified. So the concept of Azadari is not alien to Western culture and to European culture. Yes, Azadari for Imam Hussein was not here because she as well not here. In addition to this, folk poetry and English literature contains within it elements of grief. Some people sit around and say English doesn't have poetry or English doesn't have expressions of emotion or something. And honestly, this is a sign of a poor education. Um, like every other language in the world, people were reciting poetry in English and Old English before they had written texts. So it's not that we don't have poetry, but there is a specific form and you have to respect it. And certainly if you look at the, you know, like... I, folk songs, I'm not promoting songs, but just because songs have lyrics which are poetic, um, and the traditional songs, whether it's here or in Ireland or also in America, uh, the, the things that uh, were developed in the past few hundred years, you definitely you see a very vast range of emotional expression. And I do find personally from my own experience um, in English, the most effective material is the material that works with traditional forms that are already there because the language is suited to that. The West has its own unique way of lamenting, and it is recommended to view Western Azadari in its own context. In the Western, especially in the English-speaking world, there is a poetry called dirge, which is especially for expressing the sorrows. So if an English convert starts doing Azar of Imam Hussein Salam in in that format, who are we to criticize them? As long as they are maintaining the balance of Sharia, it's okay. Or if an Afro-Caribbean expresses the aza of Imam Hussein والسلام, and narrates the tragedy of Karbala in rap, who are we to criticize them? They can, because rap is their way of expression of uh, sad and happy events. So if they express their aza of Imam Hussain in rap, who are we to criticize them? So we should respect all cultures and uh, societies. Others highlight the shortcomings in Western Azadari and suggest that the production of the eulogies of Karbala should be original and not the translations of Arabic or Urdu. And the Marsias that we have in English language are actually just a translation of the Arabic or Persian. It's not an original Noha or Marsia. What we need is original Noha and Marsia in English, done by English uh, converts, rather than uh, by people who have come from other cultures, or by English people. I mean, there may be some English people who have been Muslims for a long time, not even converts, but it should come from them. It shouldn't be just a translation of Arabic Noah or Persian Noah. I don't think it works very much. The point of originality is a specific point on which to ponder. Few find some of the Asadari practices done in the non-Muslim world deviant and non-conformist to the way Asadari is done in the Middle East. Scholars around the world have opposed this position and emphasized the significance of cultural diversity in Asadari. And I do feel very sad when I hear intolerant statements about how people are authentically expressing themselves and their beliefs. Obviously, if something is haram or harmful in, in the sense that it is socially harmful or theologically harmful or it needs some reform, uh, that's a different situation. But that's oftentimes not the case. A, a lot of times it's just more of an issue of, I, I would say, cultural ego and pride when people are putting down what other people do. We should not impose a culture on Azadari. In each culture, they might have different ways of mourning and expressing their sorrow. 
uh, and we should respect all that as long as it is not harmful for the Shia and Islamic image. Azadari should be respected in all different forms in different parts of the world. For example, I was told in Bosnia uh, when they expressed the sorrow in the tragedy, instead of beating the chest, they beat the leg. Or they just cry, or they just weep, or they just uh, recite poems. So Azadari has to be respected according to local culture and traditions in every part of the world. And we should not impose a Arabic culture on a non-Arab or Persian culture on non-Persian culture or Pakistani culture on the Western culture. Similarly, it won't be effective to replicate cultural practices of the Muslim world in the West. Practices in the Muslim world have different meanings, contexts and implications, which may not be applicable to a Western audience. Procession in Muslim countries is very different. And in purely Shia countries is very different. For example, in my country, Iran, on the day of Ashura and Tasua, everywhere is closed. There's no work. Everyone comes to the street to actually join the processions. Everyone expects these processions. They love to join and express their feelings. And then they cry uh, together. They show that on this day, we are not going to do anything worldly. We will just want to focus on Imam Hussein and what they did to him. So these processions in a purely Shia country has a completely different function. We, do, we are not there to convince anyone. On the matter of interpreting and historicizing Karbala, there are variations and slight differences among historians from Arabs and non-Arabs, particularly Iranian and South Asian. This difference often converts into deadlock and severe disagreement, which is fine as long as the intellectual tradition is concerned. But scholars argue that we should not outrightly deny the opinions and interpretations of others. They suggest that one should not reject their view because of a particular incident doesn't exist in one's history. The basis of rejection should be upon research and not cultural or linguistic supremacy. We should not judge the scholars who are uh, narrating the uh, history, historical events and immediately jump to conclusion and blame them because these are not issues that would be questioned on the Day of Judgment. These are something that that happened and it's uh, the important side of that story is that we should show our loyalty to Ahl Bayt We should express our love and affiliation to Ahl Bayt And uh, whether we go to Egypt and do the ziyarah with the intention of Bibi Zainab alayha, or in Baqi or in, in Sham, uh, what matters is our intention. Many agree that whatever is under the boundary of the Sharia and does not violate the fundamentals of Islam should be welcomed. One of the, uh, one of the attractive aspects of Islam right from the beginning was that it accommodated for different cultures. Islam developed very rapidly to Persia, to Egypt, to Syria, to, uh, to, to North Africa, but it did not ban those or change those cultures. It just accept, accommodated those cultures inside the boundaries of Islam. So people in Persia prayed, fasted, uh, but celebrated the way they used to celebrate. They lamented the way they used to lament. And there was no objection to that because people of different cultures, it's just like, for example, saying in Azadari, we all, all over the world, we have to give the same food to people. Well, people would not like it. So there are different ways of Azadari in different cultures. I am not against that. I think that is, that is a good thing, this uh, sort of diversity provided it would not violate the boundaries of Sharia. 
in the post-10th century, Azadari went beyond lamentation. Artistic expressions, symbols and iconography became a part of it. This distinct feature of Azadari attracted different civilizations and cultures. As a result, Azadari assimilated into local cultural practices of every region. In our next and final part, we will discuss the political and philosophical elements of Azadari, and we will also address some of the concerns raised against the practice of Azadari. Yeah.